Hi, Janine. Hi. Hi, Heather. Hi, Gabriella. So we're here today with our very good friend and fellow bowl maker, sometimes facilitator of, of the work that we're sharing with other people, um, and an amazingly um, expansive being who is continually introducing us to new ways and other ways of being with sound, with bowls, with instruments, with frequency itself. And um, I'd like to introduce you, Janine, Janine Greaves, to this space that we've invited you to. Thank you. Um, it's a joy, actually. Every time we come together with you, Janine, it's like, um, just speaking for myself, there's always a little question that sits behind everything, which is, what now? What wonderment? What else can we create? It's possible now, because <laughs> there's a... There's a vast realm of, um, I could call it a body of information, and yet that seems like it's a really techy thing to say. So I'm going to say there's a vast realm of, of energy, of frequency, of information that you have access to that often opens up more mm. for others. And um, this conversation is one that would really like to explore how sound, and in particular, the instruments that you've both crafted and maybe that you've had a previous relationship with have contributed or are contributing to your life. Yeah, and how you use them, apply them, work with them in the multitudinous of ways. Yeah. Mm. Wow, well, thank you. Mm. <laughs> Where do we start? Where do we start? <laughs> Where would you like to start? <laughs> We could start from the fact that you're a, you're a maker, that you're a maker of these new instruments. You're a maker in this life of these new instruments. You may have been a maker in previous life of what we now know to be old instruments. Um, and if you'd like to speak about any of that, the new, the old, and your experience with them, that would be fun. I haven't known singing bowls all my life. Um, my background is as a pianist and vocalist. Um, my mother was a music teacher and it was only about, well, yeah, actually close on 20 years ago when I met someone who worked with Himalayan singing bowls and immediately was captivated. Um, that was when I was living in Germany. And then when we moved back to the UK, I started hunting for training in how to use them. And I found um, the organization with which I did a two years sound therapy course. Mm. And through that process, um, purchased more of the old singing bowls. Mm. And it was during that time that I discovered um, a course at Hawkwood College where I could make a new singing bowl um, run by Ton, our mutual teacher and mentor. And from that moment on, I was, I was, it opened up what I'll call awareness or memory of something alchemical, something primal, something so powerful in the making of them mm -hmm. and both the old and the new bowls in my world inform each other mm -hmm. um, I could say that my my conversations with the old bowls have become a background to how I converse with the new bowls Interesting. Mm. And I have encountered some extraordinary old bowls that I would say were made however many hundreds or thousands of years ago for now in our human history. Mm -hmm. And now I'm participating in making bowls that are for our future or yeah. for the future of humanity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Startles me in a way, and you know, I've just got a download of goosebumps, which kind of cor corresponds with sort of a, 
I don't know, a something. <laughs> so both the ancient and the new are very much part of the conversation that I have with these metal instruments, these forged alchemical instruments that to me are um, beings of consciousness and intelligence and information. Mm. They're like friends, you know, I don't exactly take them out for a walk, <laughs> but it's not unusual for me to be going on an adventure and one of the bowls will grab my attention and go, hey, take me with you. So I do. Mm -hmm. So when you take it with you, that's a perfect chance for me to ask you a question to explain a little bit more about what it is you might find yourself engaging with, with the bowl while you're out having your adventure. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, t two examples that just immediately drop in, in response to that. Um, one of them is a, is a very, a, a large bowl that I have. Um, it's a bowl that we use for initiating some of the new bowls and connecting them with, with all the other bowls. Um, and it has come with me on many adventures. And every now and again, it pipes up and says, take me with you. In the local area, I've, I've taken it with me to, um, to clear battlefields, for example. Mm -hmm area where I live there's been a lot of tribal warfare mm. over many centuries and so sometimes I'm just pulled out to go here and then I, I arrive oh so that's what we're doing and literally when I place the bowl on the earth and I start to sound it the vibrations go into the earth and shift all of the stuck stuff that was there all the all the blood energy all the the decay energy all of the fear the drama the brutality and the sound shifts that as well mm -hmm. it's quite extraordinary mm -hmm. without me really having to make any effort if i partner the bowl and i ask all of the other beings to contribute it's as if the bowl just completely transforms Everything that's there that is not um, coherent, that is not um, harmon harmonized, it just changes things. Mm -hmm. I have a <clears throat> somewhat <laughs> challenging question that may yeah. not be able to be answered. Yeah. For those who may be listening at some point in the future, who would like to ask this question? I'm going to ask it now, which is, okay. how do you know that that's what's happening? Ah, good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's part of the ongoing dance and conversation that some of these instruments have opened up for me. Uh -huh. It's that each time I sit with the metal instrument and I, I take my awareness, I focus, direct my awareness to the field of energy that's there. And sometimes there is a, a guardian or sometimes even a being who made the bowl however many centuries ago. I begin to mm -hmm. sense this other energy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't really give you a, a mechanistic way of connecting with them. It's more of my, my choice and my question, you know, who are you and, and what conversation can we have here? Mm -hmm. And as I'm with the bowl, what do I notice is changing? I can be aware of that, you know, on the battlefield, there's this sense as I'm walking on the earth of what I would describe as, as dead bodies or, you know, I may get pain in my body from injuries or there's this many, many different angles of information that comes in through my body and also through hearing and through my awareness that allows me to piece some of the puzzle, the pieces of the puzzle together and begin to, re to track Okay, so as I sound this, the sound is rippling through the matter of the earth and I can sense it changing something. Mm -hmm. 
and I can sense the change of the air, for example. The air can feel really prickly and dense and uncomfortable. Mm. And then when I finish sounding the bowl, my body registers the air in a very different way. It's calm and, mm -hmm. you know, the wind is gentle instead of quite fierce. And there are changes to how I sense and perceive that area. Mm -hmm before and after mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. does that assist with so, oh, very well thank yeah, you yeah. and um and not just from the the need to know in the thinking realms i just wanted to say that as you were speaking my own sense of um, sensory awareness was that my body was beginning to relax around the information that you were giving and um, um that's a sure indication for me, as you've just been speaking about as well, that your body is informing you and the questions. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do you think that the bowls themselves over the years that you've been working with them, Janine, have actually contributed? You may or may not be able to say that, but have actually contributed to that, uh, let's call it the field of awareness that you're living and working with. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, some more specifically than others. And depending on how I've worked with them, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the, the big bowl or the blessing bowl, as I sometimes call it, seems to be a, like a, a general. It will deal with pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. And there are other bowls that seem to have much more specifically directed um, vibrations that address certain things. Mm -hmm. For example, um, uh, a, a particular bowl that's coming to mind at the moment is is one that's not very big. It's a particular style of bowl. And what it does is it connects me to a completely different planet mm -hmm. that is actually no longer physically in existence. Mm -hmm. But the field of information that it anchors or holds allows me to tap into that library of information and to recall information. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't necessarily take that one to a battlefield. <laughs> um, you know, just, yeah. for example. Is that, is that really one, one of the old bowls that you're speaking of? It's, yeah. it's one of the old bowls, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and how how do you experience the new bowls different to the old bowls? My initial, if I lost you again. Yes, yeah, but only for a very short, you were about to say my, my initial, initial engagement with the bowls <laughs> is through the making of them. Um, engaging with the metal and the fire and the hammer. And, and so that in itself is a very personal alchemical process. I change. I become different as I'm creating the bowl and the bowl is creating me. Mm -hmm. And then, so, so that's one part of it. The, another one is that I am deliberately consciously with as much clarity as I can muster inviting or calling in a, a being, a field, a consciousness mm -hmm. that, comes with the bowl so every time i uh, engage with the physical bowl i am also engaging with that being mm -hmm. that life form if you like which is kind of a parallel but not necessarily exactly the same with the old bowls That's interesting. it's part of how i am perceiving a change in the bowl making of you know some of the ancient bowls were made however many thousands, some for now, and we're creating some bowls for now, but also some for the future. Mm -hmm. It's like a different, a different, bear with me while I just tap into the energy more clearly, a different expansiveness and focus of the kind of being that is coming into form with these bowls. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And it's difficult for me to define it any more clearly than that. And I would rather not, <laughs> yeah. you know, my mind would like me to, but energetically, I don't want to confine it. Totally, totally with you yeah. in this yeah. regard. Um, and, and when I, sorry, the, just one more. Um, the energy that you are being actually speaks to it. So there's no lack of information. Okay. okay. Um, when I, when I meet bowls that other people have made, mm -hmm. I'm struck by the, the shapes that, you know, we kind of have our own shape. I can tell who made the bowls if there are several, you know, like we like to gather together with our bowls and we all play with our bowls and have bowl meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fascinating for me to see how, if you really look at the bowl and you're with the bowl, you know who's made it. Mm -hmm. Like their individual signature shape, mm -hmm. the way they work with the metal, the way they shape it, they sink it, they, you know, it's fascinating mm -hmm. that there is this conversation with the metal mm -hmm. and the form mm -hmm. that is unique mm -hmm. to each person who creates the bowls. Mm -hmm. And it's more than, it's more than shape, isn't it? It's, it's an energy. It's also the, a patterning of how the yes. hammer has worked with yes. people. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I get that. It's a, and it's an energy sig signature. Yeah, beautiful. So, so it's like little families. You know, we have yes. families of these ones made and these ones made. But they yeah. all, when we sound them together, what also fascinates me is that they are all um, not in tune. Because I don't tend to subscribe to the, you know, the, the Western diatonic scale of it must be this note or it must be that note mm -hmm. because that, is a new invention. It is not the origin of, of the, you know, the sound tuning, yeah. but they are all harmonized. Yeah. We all sound beautiful together. There's no dissonance. There's no clashing of anything. It's just congruence and flow and ease. Yes. They communicate with each other with ease. Mm. Are you speaking of a, a family of bowls? All, all the new bowls, mm -hmm. you know, my bowls and your bowls yeah. talk together and it's easy. Yes. Yes. And, and that, that thrills me. Yes. yes. <laughs> really. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Really, actually, that raises some pretty interesting questions um, for, you know, different, different context. I mean, uh, gosh, I didn't, I'll, I'll go here. I sat once in um, a court as a member of jury. And, um, and the, the jury was hung for quite some days. It was a, a very tough case. And uh, there was a point where actually I was able to perceive that we were all fundamentally coming from the same place, but we had no way, no way in, within the human terms that we could sit at that table together and find that very harmonized, mm. Mm. Maybe harmonize. Yeah, let, let's settle with harmonized mm -hmm. um, space, so that we could acknowledge the sameness rather than the difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I just had this sense that our instruments actually could begin to teach us a lot mm -hmm. about that. That goes way beyond words. Mm -hmm. it goes beyond that yeah. space of where there is a polarity mm -hmm. uh, requirement requisite mm -hmm. in the world it has to be either this or that and i've never seen that before mm -hmm. um that you know that table that i sat at mm -hmm. for days mm -hmm. wow for days yeah. would might well have been really assisted by a small group of balls coming wow. in and just allowing themselves to be a different vibrational frequency yeah wow wow I get that. Totally get that. And we did actually come to um, an agreement, obviously, because I'm still not in that room. But um, it was through introducing an ancient method, which also um, came from the way of peace, which was a talking stick, mm -hmm. so that people mm -hmm. heard in a, in a neutralized mm -hmm. 
a more mm-hmm. neutralized, less charged way. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm very grateful for that glimpse. Mm-hmm. Thank you mm-hmm. for that inspiration. Oh. Do you? Do, this is a this is a question that comes in from I don't know sideways. <laughs> Do you find that the bowls change, whether it's and evolve, whether it's the um, old ones or the new ones? Or? Yes, very much. Um, there've been there's been several bowls that I made mm. um, where I've had the impulse a year or two later to work with them again, to reforge them, fire them up, hammer them again, maybe. It's as if they were asking for attention in that way. Something was required to make it more or expansive or more congruent with what was going on around the world. I've also noticed that some of the more personal bowls that I've made change as I change. Mm -hmm. The sound changes as well. As I shift energetically, I'll play the bowl and go, wow, Mm -hmm. it didn't used to sound like that. And it's very difficult for me to quantify it yeah. and yet I know yes yeah, yeah. yes I I've certainly experienced this yeah. myself very very much Janine do you um I mean you you did some training some su- substantial training in sound healing at a certain point according to an academy of teaching and a very particular um, way of being with sound, and I'm sure that's provided you with a really interesting, solid foundation. Mm. I'd like to ask you um, about whether or not you are, whether or, well, how you work with your own bowls with regards to healing and perhaps bodies, Mm. and whether in fact you do work with the bowls and bodies. I, I do. Less now than I used to. Mm -hmm. Um, And I find that I'm actually paring down the number of bowls that I have out if I'm working with a client. I'm finding that more and more I listen beforehand to what their body and being are asking for. And I have just those bowls out that are congruent with what it is that we're working with Mm -hmm. rather than having you know my whole collection of however many 42 or 50 bowls available Mm -hmm. um i have just a few Mm -hmm. and it's less and less that there are many bowls required sometimes only one Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not even required to sound it yeah just the bowl and its presence and vibration in the room can be sufficient for what that person, their body, their being is asking for, is requiring just that little bit of a catalyst to shift. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so it varies from person to person and occasion to occasion. And I use them less now than I used to. Mm-hmm but also very much more specifically Mm -hmm. for what is asked rather than just, you know, blanket balancing all the chakras or whatever. I, I, I've moved in a different direction to that, that focus. Wow. This is fascinating. Love it. I can relate to a lot of things that is like being so much more tuned in. It's like being really tuned into the beings of the balls and knowing them like intimate friends so that you can actually attune before somebody or even when to a person or a place Mm -hmm. before you go there or before they come to you to know what the frequency match is that would contribute. It's like fine, it's like fine tuning, isn't it? Is what you're talking yes. about. Real fine tuning. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember an occasion, um, Janine, where we were both at Hawkwood uh, and you were working on a big bronze ball, I think you were. And 
it was it was complete it was finished but there was something 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 that was missing that wasn't quite right do you remember that and it was yes. it was actually an internal process that an internal step you had to take and i can't remember the details but i just remember it so clearly because it was like what it was like yeah. one of those you know moments which i have experienced more since then but that was like a pivotal moment where you went through a, an internal step you got something you did something and boom yeah i it remember all changed yeah physically <laughs> it was like wow could you, yeah. could you do you remember what that was yeah, i do it was it was my what i call my soul bowl you know the the journey of the soul and and the embodying and it was a bit of an epic journey to make that bowl. And it was on the last day when we were all together and we were, you know, um, meeting the bowls and uh, initiating them. Yeah. And uh, I, gave, I handed the bowl to Ton and he sounded it and he sat in silence for a few moments as he tends to do. And then he said to me, you need to recognize and thank all of your bodies and i went so in whatever way that i could in that moment i did i just kind of asked and and witnessed and greeted and thanked every single physical form that i had held on this planet wow, wow. thanked them and went gratitude and that was the change and when he sounded it again the sound was completely different it was and I remember several people in that room startled like oh, they they it, it wasn't just a subtle change it was a very noticeable change to the bowl <laughs> and, yeah. and yeah that was one of the you know as you say one of the most dramatic and and clear events that showed me how connected we are with these instruments that we create yeah. and how when something within us changes mm -hmm. they also change yeah yeah Brilliant. awesome awesome that that was one of the most striking examples i've witnessed i've witnessed quite a few since then um but that one like just sticks in my mind. Like, <laughs> that was so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, so while you were speaking just then, I reached for, for this bowl. Um, because I think the bowl you were speaking of is comparable in size. It was a, a, hef big. a hefty bowl. A big, a big bronze bowl. Hefty, big bronze bowl. And probably bigger than, actually it's bigger than this. And, you know, I'm just reflecting on the the epoch <laughs> the epoch that we've been living through and from and even creating mm -hmm. that would regard a hunk of metal as a hunk of metal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a non-responsive non-malleable unless it's with the fire mm -hmm. non-malleable unless it's got another great big piece of metal ready to bash it mm -hmm. into shape mm -hmm. and this is the um the the immense shift that i can speak of for myself that working with these instruments that i've i had perceived as well, i don't know want to work with a piece of metal it's really hard boom you know blanket statement a lot of conclusion there there it is it's going to hurt like crazy to find that something that is so hard and so dense is so sensitive, so able to be intimately responsive to a gesture, a conscious gesture, mm. such as gratitude, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. changes everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about the way we have been, Mm -hmm. the way we have been living, the way that we have been um, making our decisions and our choices, it changes everything.
Hmm. And whatever it is that we put in place at some point in our evolutionary process that allowed us to stop engaging at that level of sensitivity and willingness to engage with all of life as conscious. Mm. I, um, I, I cannot, for the life of me, and I don't wish to understand what it was that we were trying to do, but I welcome so warmly, so heartily, that we're actually at a different time now, mm. when more and more people get that this no longer is a hunk of metal. Mm. And is as much a being as I would be willing to be. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a hunk of metal, actually, at times, than this ball, mm -hmm. for the density of my own existence. And um, so, just, you know, just as a personal moment, and just to acknowledge the two of you with being able to share this moment, mm -hmm. to really thank, mm -hmm. yes, Tom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, those that we have been mm -hmm. and those that we're really willing to choose to be now. Because mm -hmm. um, we can't talk about all of the different things that have happened with the people that we've been interacting with through this work. Sometimes it's with the hammer and sometimes Hundreds it's and not. thousands. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's taken the last yeah. and last and last. And I'm just, you know, to you two, I'm immensely grateful mm -hmm. um, as somebody who has regarded herself as a hunk of metal <laughs> and no longer does. No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no longer does. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's the balls have been changing us. Yes. The ball. The more balls we have, each ball changes us. Each mm. ball brings more consciousness to us, to the maker, to the whole group who's part of the making and to the planet and to what's possible on the planet. Yes. It's like, yeah. oh, it's, wow. Wow. Do you want to say any more to that, Janine? Or is there anything else you would like to speak or to? Or is there a bowl that you would like to speak? Is there anything? It's your space. Um, something that's been with me recently uh, since since we um, were working a lot more closely with silver mm. and how it became evident that some of those instruments are actually not intended to have a sonic function yeah. that some of them you know are sort of beyond sonic. <laughs> Um, and it also connects in with a comment I made earlier where sometimes just having a bowl in the room yeah. without sounding it is sufficient for triggering a change that is being asked for. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding more and more as I, as I interact with my bowl, by interact, sometimes it's just a case of going hi as I go past it. You know, acknowledging it, hello, I don't have to sound it. It becomes this two-way conversation mm -hmm. where I can have the bowl with me and it's like a friend just watching mm -hmm. as I'm painting or as I'm, you know, doing a body process or as I'm writing notes or whatever. It's, there is this benevolent, mm -hmm kind, highly intelligent presence yeah. that I more and more as I engage with it, I begin to register it. Yeah. Um, so it comes back to this conversation or even communion that we can engage with, with these yeah. beings and instruments that sometimes require sounding or activating, but most of the time are silent, mm -hmm. audibly. Mm -hmm. Yet there is still communion. Yeah. Yeah. And that is something that I 
I'm beginning to engage with even more powerfully than I was before. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been immersed in the world of sound as a, you know, my mother was a music teacher. There was voice, there was blah, blah, blah. And so sound was really dominant. And now it's almost as though I can let go of the, the hunger for sound and go to what else is beyond the sound mm -hmm. vibrationally that adds even more awareness and possibility for engaging with these beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes. So thank, thank you for midwifing <laughs> these beings to, to come and, and, you know, be present with this planet and with these, these bodies and places. Thank you. Thank you too. Received. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Um, wow. This has taken us to a beautiful place. Wow. Is there anything to add? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, the bowl that you have in your hand, would it like to contribute more directly? Can we see it? Would it like to sound? Shall we or just ask receive? it whether it would be willing to be received by us all? With or without sound. This is the silver ball. Mm. She likes water. Mm. She likes water. Somehow there's a conversation that sets up with water in this bowl that I'm not a part of yet, but something changes. Mm, I love that. I'm not a part of it yet. I love that. <laughs> love that. Does that mean you put water inside? or I, I put water inside mm. and I put her in water. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. You know, when, I, when I was on, on Lewis last year, she insisted on coming everywhere and particularly to beaches and to places where you know there was one particular stone circle that was submerged with water in water she had to go and sit in the water inside the circle uh -huh. wow there's wow. an interesting conversation that sets up with water so and um she was crafted in orkney uh, yes. in the spring of 2016 after an adventure sensing this one coming in yeah. mm. second of, of the bowls that we're aware of being crafted in this way so she's intimately con connected with stone circles intimately mm -hmm. stone circles with that frequency of the north land that is surrounded by water yeah um, and mm -hmm. this knows what, what else she's going to reveal but I certainly love being with her and what she's mm. willing to bring to our awareness even if we don't directly ask mm -hmm. mm. I'm aware that she's contributing to mm -hmm. our space hugely mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I think we might actually oh sorry Janine that's all right she was just saying hi bye hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder whether we've actually come to the end of this particular conversation mm. um, beautiful uh, thank you so much yeah. Small rich, what a rich contribution. Mm. <laughs> totally. Thank you. Uh, it was fun. Yeah, Yay. Really fun. Yay. You know, it's also one of the real benefits that I'm getting from these conversations at a personal level. We're discussing this ourselves, is when when each of us are more able to directly speak or acknowledge some of what this work, this um, play, this creation, this co-creation is taking us to, it seems um, to have a direct effect on our capacity to receive more and more and more mm -hmm. from the instruments themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. really, really enjoying that and um, we're learning a lot. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Thank you for that contribution to yeah. all of us and to all of the bowl makers and all of those who actually are in possession of a bowl. Yeah. This is not just a hunk of metal. Yeah. This is not just, and it never was, not just mm -hmm. a hunk of metal. 
Yes. Thank you so much, Jean. Mm. Incredible being. You're very welcome. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>